Today, we're gonna to be talking about two of the most important, iconic, and superior instant film cameras ever produced. They need no introduction. It's the Polaroid SX70 and SLR680. We're gonna compare these two masterworks and if you're considering making the leap to the top of the Polaroid camera line, hopefully I can help guide the way. All right, let's, all right, you know, these are the big boys. Let's, let's do it. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and today's instant review is a little different. We're gonna be comparing the best cameras Polaroid ever produced and see which one might be right for you. Whether you've been shooting instant film since the 70s or just got into it today, if so, welcome to the squad, you've no doubt heard of the golden child, the SX70. It was the first Polaroid integral camera ever made. It's really the touchstone of this entire medium, and odds are you already know why it's more than just a hottie with a body. It's an SLR with an F8 glass lens. Sonar models have autofocus and all of them have manual focus. Being that it's an SLR, you actually see what you're shooting through the viewfinder. It's just the best experience you can have shooting instant film. However, these cameras were only produced for nine years with the last hitting shelves in 1981. Polaroid moved on to pushing the newer 600 film type and also seemed to be moving on from this kind of camera altogether. The metal SLR design was simply too high end for their broader target market and to reach wider audiences, they almost went into full plastic mode. Never go into full plastic mode, not even with your wife. It's just not worth it. You can't go back. You can never go back from that. What did sneak through this big shift at Polaroid was a dark horse candidate for their greatest camera of all time, a sneaky SX70 evil cousin called the SLR 680, produced for only five years. And this is what we're gonna get into here. Which of these delicious treats is gonna steal your money? If you're making the jump from a vintage Sun 660 or an Impulse or even the modern Polaroid cameras, there are a few factors to consider regarding these two crown jewels and a lot of it comes down to price. So right at the outset, let's say you wanna get an SX70 with or without sonar autofocus. That doesn't look like it's been dragged behind a car for several miles. That's gonna be around 75 to $150 on eBay. If you want a refurbished one from Polaroid, that's a staggering $400 or $370 from Mint Camera. There are good warranty based reasons to buy from these companies, but for the sake of this video, let's just say you're going the eBay route. You love eBay, you're an auction guy, or girl, uh, so you got your SX70 for 120 bucks. Feel great, it looks great, your family loves you again, but you're gonna need to add a flash bar to compensate for that SX70 film. SX70 film is ISO 160 versus Polaroid 600 film, which is ISO 640. If you're just getting started, that means the SX70 film is way less sensitive and will not do you much good without a strong light source. If you put 600 film in an SX70, it would be blown out because the SX70 thinks the darker film is inside. And let's be honest, Polaroid is sinking all of their marketing and resources into iType and 600 film, if you care at all about special frames and faster film. Maybe you don't, but accessibility wise, you're most likely gonna want that 600 film. The Mint Flash Bar is the standard solution for this, and that goes for around $90. Already, we're at at least $200, or you could pay to have the camera converted, uh, but you're still gonna be at that price point. At this point, though, you're pretty much set. The Mint Flash Bar has three settings, off, one of the most iconic settings, half power, and high power. Uh, the half setting is amazing. It allows you to use 600 film in your SX70 without the need for an ND filter. Polaroid does make neutral density filters that fit over 600 film packs that adjust for the light sensitivity of the SX70, but honestly, they're kind of annoying and you're gonna need the flash anyway if you ever wanna use this camera handheld in lower light, so it is what it is. Or is it what it is? It isn't necessarily what it is. We're talking about a lot of money at this point, so I fully understand if you're thinking, yeah, no f***ing way I'm spending that on instant film. But if you are in it to win it, you're dropping $200 on this SX70. What if you spent $250 on the all-in-one SLR 680? The 680 is truly the ultimate Polaroid camera. It's newer, more streamlined. The flash bar is built into the camera. All of them have sonar autofocus, whereas only some SX70s do. It has the classic Polaroid SLR body with the viewfinder. And best of all, it natively takes Polaroid 600 film. 
No need to adapt anything. No need to worry if a third party tool will work properly or die because you didn't bring AAA batteries with you, even though you wrote it down and you left the note on your wallet so you wouldn't forget, but then your dog ate the note and your wallet, so now you have no money, no ID, and nobody wants to hang out with you anymore. Not that that's happened to me, I would never do that. That's just like not me, like that, I mean, I couldn't possibly have done that. Now, let's look at our prices one more time. You've got a functioning SX70 with a flash bar for around $200, if you're lucky. The SLR 680's price directly from Polaroid is a frankly absurd $620, where on eBay, the going rate for a functioning one is 250 bucks. The key term here is functioning. This may seem obvious, but when you're going the eBay route, you have to make sure the seller guarantees it's been tested. Many Polaroid cameras on eBay are either untested or explicitly not working, and that's always noted in the auction description. Especially with the SX-70s, you gotta keep an eye out for that. Some of these cameras are almost 50 years old. Look, for the price of a few packs of film, it's worth getting that sweet, sweet 680. It's very cumbersome walking around with an SX-70 in the flash bar. It just sort of precariously rests in here and it can fall out if it's the camera's closed and hanging upside down. It's just another thing to worry about. And we're not in the business of worrying, right? We're in the business of like doing, having fun. Pros and cons. Eh, actually, you know what, skip it. We're skipping it. This whole video is kind of a pros and cons thing. Eh. Pardon the interruption, as this is an SX-70 episode, I figured what better time to show this off. I just wanted to show you this awesome thing sent over to me by Max from Clicky Bricks. Max is a fantastic human being, probably donates to charity. So he sent me this SX-70 Lego set and a 600 Lego set. I'm gonna try to build one here right now and time lapse it. All right, here we go. My dad would be so proud of me right now if he um, ever really cared. So there you have it, a real SX-70, a Lego SX-70. At this point, I can't even tell them apart because I'm losing my mind. That was very fun. Thank you to Max for sending that over. Head on over to etsy.com slash shop slash clicky bricks and go ahead and give this a shot. You can buy the instruction manual only or the entire set. Now back to your original programming. The fact is whatever camera you go with, you won't regret it. The SX-70 and the SLR-680 are simply the best Polaroid has to offer. And yes, I'm aware of the SLR 690, but it's essentially the exact same camera as the 680 that came out for a brief moment in the late 90s with a digital internal exposure element that's like much harder to fix and does essentially the same thing. So we're not talking about that today. One can irrationally hope that Polaroid brings back these top of the line SLR cameras, but until that never happens, happy bidding. Thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and beat that subscribe button with a tire iron. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, and all things instant. Bye.